Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm going to do a 38th tutorial on how to create an FPS game. And I know this has been quite a long wait for this, but today we're finally going to start making the main menu. And now, because uh, you've been so patient and waiting for it for so long, I'm going to teach you how to make an awesome menu. So, uh, first, let's open up Unity. Alright. And. Wait for it to load. There we go. Alright. So, uh, because we want a main menu and want to make it all interesting and stuff, we want to make a 3D menu. We don't just want GUIs, right? We don't just want 2D buttons. We want like 3D interactive stuff. So to do that, we have to create a new scene. So go to File, New Scene, and this is the scene that we'll we will navigate to all other scenes from, and you'll see later what I mean by that. So now, uh, just first of all, save the scene. Uh, call it main menu or however you want to call it and there you go the first thing you'll get when you create a new scene is a camera right so just uh, zero that reset it to zero you know zero and all axes except the scale um, I usually uh, reset it to zero every time you know it's not a must but I just like to start everything from zero I know it keeps me organized Anyhow, uh, what we want to create is like uh, 3D objects that have something written on them so we can, you know, click them. And so first we have to create the object. So what we're going to do is go to Game Object, Create Other, and 3D Text. And notice this is what you'll get. It's 3D Text. That's what it is. It's basically a plane with an editable text on it. Right? Now, first of all, take the text and drag it in front of your camera right so we can see it see the little preview down here let's drag it a bit down a bit there alright so now if you look at the text it's actually looking quite blurry and ugly and we don't want it to look like that see if you play the game you just get crappy text on the screen so we want to make a better resolution and also change the font so first of all set the font size to a hundred now this might scale it up a bunch so what you want to do is once you've got your font size you want to just take it back you now move it on the Z axis right that is annoying just like that there we go just until you know you get it into a, a good uh, place not yet and you can give it a bit of rotation if you want. I just want it to have to be straight in front of the camera. But anyhow, just position it like this. Like in front of the camera wherever you want it. I want it like top left corner, so I'm gonna do that. What the hell? Alright. There that's a pretty good position. Alright. So now once you've positioned it. We're going to rename this to the current button we want it to be. And I want it to be the play button. So I'm going to call it play in the name. And then change the text to play. Great. Now the second thing I want to do is change the font. Now this might be a little tricky because you can't just go to this font variable here and just change it. See, that will come all fucked up and such. Right? So to do that, the next step we have to do to change the font completely is to go to our font. I keep my font in GUIs. Go to our font, then click on the little arrow thingy to open it. And you see with the font, you get a font material and a font texture. Just take the font material and put it on the play button. And there you go. It's nice and good now. Alright, so now that you learn how to set up your font and such, we will begin to uh, do mouse detection. Check whether the mouse is on it or not. So. Uh, create a new script. We're going to create a new script for each button because each button does something different. So, create JavaScript. And right here, just type um, play button. Right? Just like that. Drag it onto the play button. Perfect. Now double click it. and here we are now let's just uh delete these uh, before we delete them i want to i want to uh, tell you a little about events 
If you don't know what events are, I think I explained it previously, but uh, just to make sure. Um, start and update, those are both events. Start, an event is when something happens in the computer, basically. So when you press a key, that's an event. When you press uh, the mouse, that's an event. When your screen refreshes, that's an event. So basically, each thing that happens is like an event. So the way events work in Unity is you type, there are certain um, uh, functions that Unity looks for in each code, which are called events, and it executes each function in a different, um, at a different event. So the start function, it will execute at the start of the game, the, the event of the start of the game. And the update, it will execute every frame, which is the event it will execute, the update function. Now we got that clear, let's delete both of these. And we're going to use a new event called function. Ah, so annoying. Function on mouse over. God damn it. Alright. Now, what this function, this event does, is it detects um, uh, where, whether the mouse is over. So, while you, the mouse is over the object the script is attached to, which is this, so while the mouse is over this, this will keep getting called, right? So what we want to do on mouse over is go to the to the meshes render component, which is this. We want to go to this component, and through it we want to change the materials color. So uh, you'll see you have the material variable. So we're going to access this variable through script, this material through script, and you're going to change its color to red when we are uh, over the play button. So just go render dot under why is it not completing me dot material dot color equals color dot red. Right? I'll explain colors in a minute, but let's just test this out first. And it's not working. Alright, so let me just pause the video for one. Oh, whoops. Alright, I forgot one thing. Um this on mouse over event, it detects um the mouse over through a uh, collider. And currently we don't have any collider on this text, so let's just add a collider. Go to component physics box collider. Just adjust it because once um the mouse is over the collider, so if the mouse is here or here, it will still activate the text. So you can just adjust it to um the size and this and the positioning right here. I'm just gonna set it to like eight. There that's more accurate. Uh complete an absolute eight. I don't know, just make it like a negative six. That's way too much. I got five point five point two. Right, that's pretty good. Now let's play that. There we go. We got changing text. All right, hold on one sec. All right, excuse me, that pause. All right, so now we got the changing text, but notice it doesn't change back when we put it on it, when we go off it. So there's another event for that. It's called function on mouse on mouse exit there we go and so here we can just uh this um uh, this function will on will be this um event excuse me will only be called once it, it has left the the material so we can change the color back to white here and then let's see how that works bam see now this is a pretty boring button though, it just changes color on and off. And we don't really want that, we want it to kind of fade into red when, once we go out. So first of all I'm going to teach you a little about colors, alright? So uh, the way colors work in computers, for each pixel, there's a color code which consists of three numbers. So if you type here, color equals new, equal, well you can put new but you don't have to in JavaScript equals color and this constructor takes three parameters right first is the red second is the green and third is the blue if you didn't know what RGB codes mean it's uh, red green and blue now the way colors work in computer is you have three colors red green and blue 
and the computer finds a mix um, of, of the color you want so like well it doesn't find but you set a mix so for say you want like a uh, I don't know um I think orange then you just put like a hundred red and a uh, hundred and well two hundred green I think that will give you orange I don't know but it's just like mixing colors in the real world just you have uh, you have three colors to start with and from there you mix your own colors so that's how colors work and you can also use the colors that um, unity already has in it if you type um color dot it should give you a list I don't know so anyways uh, if you want to change only a specific uh, parameter of the color oh by the way a color code can only be between 0 and 255 so the maximum uh, color the maximum amount you can put in the red is 255 and the minimum is 0 and so forth so on forth so forth for the green and blue so say we just wanna change the blue and the we just wanna um uh, well see we start from white which is a color code of 255 255 255 and wanna make it gradually go to red so what we wanna do is minus from the green and blue until uh until it goes to zero the until it goes to zero on the green and blue and then we'll be only red all right so let's uh Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it fade when it exits. So what we're going to do is, first of all, do what we did before. Do color dot red. Alright? And then we're going to use the function update. Alright? So, function update. Alright? And in this function update, we're going to put if render dot color render dot material dot color dot blue is bigger than zero uh excuse me is less than two hundred and fifty five then render dot material dot color dot blue plus equals uh five well, not five. Well, yeah, five. Actually, four times time. Time dot delta time. And this time dot delta time is just to smooth the gradual, uh, the gradual adding to the color. All right. And uh, let me just close the editor because it's not auto completing me. I think if I will reopen it, it will start auto completing me. Um. Right, let's try. It. Right, so now we have to do exactly what we did for the blue. We have to do for the green. So, if there render want the regular render component dot material dot color dot green is less than two hundred fifty five, then render because we don't want to make it you know go overboard. So render dot material dot color dot green plus equals four times time dot delta time just like that now watch what it will do see that see that fade now if you want a slower fade you just add a small a smaller value right so I want a slower fade I'll just add a smaller value and there we go that's a much more dynamic button, I think. If you want a faster fade, you make a bigger value. So let's look at what we're doing here. So while the mouse is over, all right, keep changing it back to red. So this can't keep up with this because it keeps resetting it. So um, it will stay red even though it's still calling this code. This code doesn't matter because it ke keeps uh, um, resetting it back to zero again and again and again. So this uh, this just won't cut it. And then once this is not active, this will slowly, this uh, will slowly add up the blue and add up the green until they're to the correct value. So now that we got that done, uh, we want to make more buttons, right? So let's duplicate this. Put it like right under. You know what? I'm gonna put it right under and like that. And I'm gonna call this one uh, credit. Dits. 
and I have to reattach the collider because notice the collider is not all over it so I'm just gonna do remove component and then uh, component physics uh, box collider see that's much better so 8 negative 5.4 there we go oh and call the credits button credits and now um, do it create other actually I don't want to create another one just um, with the credits duplicate it then you know this is gonna be the exit button so I'm gonna call it exit exit notice the collider have to remove the collider then reattach it adjust it I just remember the adjusting for the height so it's kinda easier for me and now watch this see that we got awesome buttons alright so the first thing we wanna do is make uh... more uh... the, the credits oh yeah first thing we wanna do is make the no actually first thing we wanna do is make the exit button right so we'll start like that so let's create a new script new javascript call it exit Oops. i wanted to call it exit button put it inside a script uh, and just so you know, if I didn't uh, prepare you for this, this is going to be a long tutorial because I have uh, a lot to do. So uh, just bear with me here. It's uh, Believe me, it's all worth it. We're going to do really cool stuff. So first of all, remove the play button script and attach the new exit button script. Open the exit button script and just copy the exact same code. And the reason we have the exact same code in two scripts is because we're going to change this one. So now, first of all, we want to detect while it's over, and while it's over, we want to detect if it want to detect if it clicks. So we want to detect while it's over if the player uh, clicked the button. So if if player excuse me clicked the mouse. So if that input dot get button up because we don't want to keep detecting fire one. So if he left click. If you left click, if this event was called, it will check if you left clicked. So if this event won't be called, meaning if the mouse isn't over it, it won't check if you left click. Then open brackets and just do application dot exit. And not exit, excuse me. Application dot quit. Yes. And now uh, you can play this and you can click the exit button but you won't see it actually doing anything because it doesn't exit in editor mode only exits in the file mode so if you do file the build for the computer if you don't know how to do that I'm, I'm gonna teach you in the final tutorial but it will it, it works just believe me it works you just don't see it in the editor alright so now that we got the exit button working easy as pie I'm gonna create a new button call it credits I keep forgetting the last part um button credits button perfect open it oh and uh, replace this play button with the credits button and then cancel and reopen it and there we go right so copy the code from the exit button and put it here now here we just want to leave empty for now because we need another uh we need to make some uh we need to make a credit screen basically right so the way it's gonna go down is like this we have text here and then we're gonna make some more text here then once the player clicks the credits button it will go to that text right and then once he clicks a button on that text it will go back to this main menu right so first let's create that uh credits text so other component uh, game object create other 3D text and we don't need colliders for this these 3D texts because uh you know they're only they're only 3D text they're not buttons so first of all position them in the world it's kind of hard to position 3D text because they're planes and you can't see them but uh you know just uh, do what you can <coughs> Make sure it's out of this screen. See, that's like that. It's not good to make it a lot more to the right. All right. Now, once you got that down, call it like cred credit. 
gives me credits one, right? What the hell? Credits one, M credits text, excuse me. Alright, so now once you got that credits text position, change its uh, font if you want. You can change it to a different font. You don't have to do the same font always. Um, I'm just going to use one font for my entire game. So There we go. I got your font set up. All right, your font size set up. I'm going to set it to 30 because I want to fit a lot of text on there. Well, you know what? How to hell with it? Even 50. Right, so now change this to like the credits text. So I'm going to put coding VZ Demon. All right, and then you know, I maybe want some more text on there. I want to show you know more people who are with me on this project so I'm gonna put like art and I got all my art from the internet so internet internet <laughs> right and then uh hell I'll put even a special thanks special thanks to <laughs> also the internet but uh yeah I wanna I wanna put the special things on a new line. So for each new line you have to create a new text object just so if you didn't get that. So thank you. Uh -huh. Wow, that's a bit long. You know what? I'll cut it in the middle. Control C. Oh wait, that didn't do it. <laughs> well, this is getting kind of. Oh, there we go. I'll just cut it right here. Then I'll make a new one. Duplicate the credits text and there we go. So now once you got your credit screen, you wanna know how to position you wanna what we wanna do now is save the camera position, alright? So we wanna save the camera position at this point and we wanna save the camera position at the point that we're gonna find out in a minute, so what we're gonna do is make create new game object, put it inside the camera, and then set reset its position. So it will be right where the camera is, and then take it out. Not to exit, take it out completely, and then call it. Um, what we want to call it is uh, the front point, because that's the main uh, front front screen point, right? So now we want to take the camera and we want to move it all the way to the credits screen. So that's this is going to be a bit difficult. Ah, I hate this editor. Right. Um there we go. I'll just position it like that or however you want it to be positioned. Uh once you got it positioned, create a new game object, create empty. Put inside camera reset position and then call it um I don't know uh credits point and take it out and now once we got our two points let's just reset our camera to the uh, to its original point good thing we saved it reset position and then take it out all right now what I want to do is make a script on the camera that moves it from one point to another on click of the credits. So um we'll create a new JavaScript. Let's call it menu camera. Cameras, excuse me. Menu camera, right? Well, main menu, right. So we'll take menu camera, put it inside a script, and then attach this menu camera to the main menu. Uh, to the main camera, excuse me getting mixed up here, right. And now open it. 
Good. All right. So first, we're gonna need to reference the two points we have. So var front front equals of type vector three. Right. Keep the fucking changes. Then var credits is of type vector three two because that's all point. And then we want to make a private variable, call it target, and this will be like our current point that we're currently on. So var target is of type vec vector three. And we'll make this a private because we don't want it to show up in the editor. So private var target equals vector three. So now here we're gonna check if the target is not null. So if if we have a target, so we won't just go to a null place. If target is not equal null, then what we want to do is smoothly move the camera to the point, so to the target point. So what we're going to do is a uh, transform dot position dot x equals, and then the function we so love, smooth damp. Um, we're going to do it for each of the axes. Smooth damp only takes uh, floats as parameters. So uh we're gonna do this separate for each axis. So uh equals math f dot smooth damp. Right, and this takes four parameters. This current x, so the current uh x, so transform dot position dot x, then targets x target dot position dot x and then the damp variable which we need to make so make var private var damp one damp x excuse me equals uh let's set it to like zero point four so just put damp damp x doesn't really matter I think anyway make uh damp variables for each axis so damp y and damp z. Good. Now put it in this in the third parameter, and in the last parameter, we're gonna put the speed, how fast it's gonna go there. I'm gonna put 0 0.8, right? And the same for make sure the speed is same for each axis. Otherwise, we'll fuck get fucked up. And then copy and paste this, and just change wherever it says x. Just change that to y. Transform that position that y. Then the transform that position that y target that position dot y and damp y right and then copy that and do it also for the z axis and that was in dot z dot z dot z and damp z alright so this is how it's gonna go down now we wanna make it change through another script so we're gonna just make a function that we can call through message so function, and you're very familiar with this if you watch my other tutorials. If not, then read a little about function. Credits. Um, and then just we're gonna just gonna say target equals credits. There we go. And then we're gonna make another function to get it back to the front. So we're gonna call this front. Then we're gonna see target equals front. All right. Now in the credits button, where we where we uh, put uh, the action that it does on click, we're gonna put um, game object dot find with with tag main camera dot transform transform dot send message and uh send messages credits that's it and that should do the trick now we need to actually set the variables oh oh geez I forgot um 
Uh, vector 3 objects appear like this in the editor, which is a really pain to set because you can't just drag and drop them on. So you have to set each point manually. So for the front point, you can just uh, you can copy the, the you can stay at zero 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 because that's the position of the front point. But the credits point, you just gotta copy the X and paste it right in the credits X down here. Right, then go to the credits Y, control C, and uh, main camera, this is right here, and credits point. Oh, wait, I got the wrong Y. Ah, this is so frustrating. Alright, so credits, and then credits point dot Z. Alright, so that was frustrating to do. Anyways, let's test it out. Click on the credits button. And whoops. It says vector 3 position not found. Hold on one second. Oh, excuse me, my bad on that error. Um found the fix. I put um ve vector 3 dot vector 3, I mean vector 3 dot position and vector 3 and position is a vector 3, so vector 3 does not going to contain a position variable. So I was taking talking to a vector three like it was a transform and that was uh that was my bad. Alright, so now I fixed it, so now let's test it out. Let's hope this works. Credits. Bam. And uh, I might might want to make it a bit faster because it's a bit farther. So no, first I'm gonna take all the credits text. Where is it? All right. Let's take all the credits text and just move it forward. Not with the credits point. Move it forward. Not forward. <laughs> right, and then just take the credits point and recopy because we only moved it on the z axis. Recopy it to z axis. And then let's see that. Credits. Bam. And we're here. Let me just speed this up. Uh, I want to make it 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Now watch how smooth that is. Credits. And now here we need to make a back button. So make a back button and then I'll cut the tutorial. So let's just create a new script back button. So I'll put this new script in the scripts. Um, duplicate this. Put the back button like right at the bottom there. Um, gotta add a box glider. Never forget. <coughs> Negative two. Um, let's put that at three, not three, four. Yeah, four. That's a good positioning. And then just put the back button on there. And call it uh, back, All right? And then just open the back button. Now copy the regular button code from here. And then say, and then copy this from here. And just change the message to front. Front. I think that's the name of the function. Yeah, front. All right, so now make sure it's attached there, and let's give it a test. Let's give it a run. Credits. Back. There. So um, that's it for uh, this tutorial. Next tutorial, we'll make the um, uh, the play button, and we'll get into levels and managing your game. And then next, we'll maybe do an in-game menu. So uh, that's all for today. Sorry for b being so long, and bye-bye. Uh,